Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God has awakened us to another bright new day with all its opportunities for pleasing Him. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. begins on page 32 with our opening sentence and continues on page 35 and following. Let all the earth acclaim God, sing to the glory of his name, make his praise glorious. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We pray together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilate. O oh, shout to the Lord and triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving 
and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His love and mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now we bring before God those things of which our consciences are afraid, and let us ask for God's forgiveness. And so we pray together. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we have our psalm appointed for this morning, and our psalm is Psalm 88. And psalm 88 is to be found on page... 582. So we turn to page 582 in our books of common prayer. And let us recite the psalm together. O Lord, my God, my Savior, by day and night I cry to you. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Incline your ear to my lamentation. For I am full of trouble. My life is at the brink of the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I have become like one who has no strength, lost among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the depths of the pit, in dark places and in the abyss. Your anger weighs upon me heavily, and all your great waves overwhelm me. You put my friends far from me, you have made me to be abhorred by them. I am in prison and cannot get free. My sight has failed me because of trouble. Lord, I have called upon you daily. I have stretched out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will those who have died stand up and give you thanks? Will your love and kindness be declared in the grave? Your faithfulness in the land of destruction? Will your wonders be known in the dark? Or your righteousness in the country where all is forgotten? But as for me, O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Lord, why have you rejected me? Why have you hidden your face from me? Ever since my youth, I have been wretched and at the point of death. I have borne your terrors with a troubled mind. Your blazing anger has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They surround me all day long like a flood. They encompass me on every side. My friend and my neighbor, you have put away from me. And darkness is my only companion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to our first reading from the book of Numbers. We read in chapter 13, verses 1 to 3 and 21 to 30. The Lord said to Moses, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am given to the Israelites. From each of the ancestral tribes, you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, all of them leading men among the Israelites. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin to Rehob, near Lebohamah. They went up into the Negev and came to Hebron, and Ahiman, 
Sheshai and Talmai, the Anakites, were there. Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came to the Wadai Eshol and cut down from there a branch with a single cluster of grapes, and they carried it on a pole between two of them. They also brought some pomegranates and figs. That place was called the Wadai Eshol because of the cluster that the Israelites cut down from there. At the end of the 40 days, they returned from spying over the land. And they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the Israelites in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them, We came to the land to which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Yet the people who live in the land are strong, and the tongues are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the land of Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live by the sea and along the Jordan. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. We turn to our canticle, the Song of the Redeemed on page 53 of our Books of Common Prayer. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to our second reading from the Gospel of Matthew, and we're reading chapter, Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Matthew 18, 21 to 35. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So 
so my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from the heart. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. Let us reflect now on this passage from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 to 35, which we just read. And our topic this morning is forgiveness. How often, I'm sure all of us have heard somebody at some time you know, swear that I will, when somebody has done them wrong, I will never forgive so-and-so. For what they have done to me. And when we read this and study this particular passage on forgiveness this morning, we will all realize, you know, what what self condemnation is involved in that particular uh, statement. We will recognize that if we do not forgive ourselves, if we cannot forgive, we will not ourselves be forgiven. So when we say we and not going, we will never forgive so and so. We are condemning ourselves to eternal unforgiveness and eternal damnation. So let's look at the passage here this morning. Peter was came to Jesus to ask about, you know, who should I, what should I do when someone from the church and a fellow church member sins against me? How often should I forgive? And perhaps it was at that time there might have been some kind of rule of thumb sort of thing that seven times is about about right. That one, you know, can go the, to the extent of forgiving someone perhaps seven times. So Peter raises it. You should, is, is it that I should forgive as many as seven times? And Jesus makes it very, very, very clear to Peter. You know, we, are, we must forgive not just seven times, but 77 times, or some scripture, some transitions say 70 times, seven times. The idea, of course, is not literal. This is not literal. It doesn't mean 49 or, or 490. But Jesus is essentially saying that you always have to forgive. You, don't, you can't count. You can't count the number of times you may have to forgive. You always, in other words, you always have to forgive. And the point is very clear, uh, again, you know, making the same point. Forgiveness is a very important. Not that it's easy, as everyone knows. It's hurt. You know, when someone sins against us, we are hurt. You know, sometimes it's very destructive. It's not just the feelings. It's also they may have, you know, they may have lost goods and property and even loved ones, you know, maybe someone, you know, especially in this day and age, a loved one is killed. You know, um, people can devastate us in all kinds of ways. And, uh, you know, you know, you know, reaction or reaction is one of unforgiveness. We, we, we are angry, we are hurt, and hate comes to the fore. And, our, it's incumbent upon us as, as Christians to find forgiveness because if we do not forgive ourselves, we ourselves will not be forgiven. So you might say, oh, it, our, very, our own um, place in God's eternal kingdom is at stake. If we do not forgive, of course, we will not be able to receive God's forgiveness. And in fact, you know, we will be condemning ourselves to eternal damnation. And Jesus tells a parable um, about, you know, to emphasize this point to Peter, if Peter was, you know, in any way was, was about to misunderstand. And here, the master in this parable, the master is God. We have to think that the master is God and the two servants, you know, and each we can, you know, identify with one or the other. And there's a one 
Jesus makes a clear conclusion at the end of it. So the first servant was a huge debt. And, you know, if we look at our footnotes, our footnotes tells us that this debt, that this, this debt was 10,000 talents. In those days, um, a talent was about 15 years wage for a normal worker. One talent was worth about 15 years, 15 years wages for a normal worker. And this person has 10,000 talents, a huge amount. He could never, well, the clear point that Jesus is making for us is, you know, this fellow can never ever repay this. But he owes it. How he came to it, we do not know. Um, and when the time comes for him to pay, he, he obviously can't pay. And the master who is who represents God, in this case we say, is merciful because the usual thing is the first reaction was yes you sell all your property your, your family wife children and all property must be sold and payments made that is the way the things worked you know you, you sell everything and you sell even yourself and your family into slavery to pay that debt which you couldn't you know which you couldn't come up with there actual money to pay. So the man clearly is in serious trouble and he makes an appeal, appeal to the master who represents God. And the master has pity, like God will have pity upon us as we turn our hearts to him in, in repentance. So he begs, have patience with me, I will pay you everything. Now, the master, based on what I just said, the master is very, you know, obviously very clear that this person really can't pay. He, he's just saying that, that there's no way that he can pay. But the master is moved with pity for this man. That master representing God. God knows our weaknesses. And God is ever ready to forgive us when we sin. We just have to ask for forgiveness. We have to ask, and God will, who loves us, will have pity on us and forgive us our sins. It's our sins are the barrier which will prevent us from entering into our eternal place with God. So God will forgive us and clear the way, as it were, for us. Remove that load on us, that load of sin upon us, and make us free to enter into his kingdom. So the servant is freed of all that debt. What a wonderful, you know, situation. You know, imagine his fear. He knew, he knows he couldn't, he couldn't repay his debt. And now he's free. What a wonderful feeling of release. When we know, when we confess our sins, and in, in, in our case, in our real life, we confess our sins, and that heavy load upon us is removed. We, we get forgiveness from the one whom we we hurt, from the ones and injure, you know, and we get forgiveness from God as we repent. And a heavy load is lifted off of us. So this slave is now free, free from that debt. And one would think we're ready to be generous to the world and having experienced the wonderful generosity of the master. But no, there's this other slave who owes him, by comparison, a minuscule sum. It's a hundred denarii. You know, the denarii was the typical daily wage. So that's a hundred days uh, wages, as opposed to 15 by 10,000 days, you know, uh, we, um, in yearly wages, not daily wages, yearly wages, a huge sum. Minuscule sum, this as a servant is owing, just a hundred days wage. So in terms, you know, of what it's worth, that's it's so much less. But yet this slave who has been forgiven, his debt has been forgiven, a huge load will remove from him, is unable to bring himself to, to generosity. And we might, you know, reflect on ourselves, you know, we want to be forgiven. But we cannot forgive people when they do us 
any kind of injury, any kind of hurt, any kind of harm, any kind of loss. Just as we want to be forgiven, the idea is we should also want to forgive. Jesus is showing, here is this man forgiven this huge debt, unable and unwilling, not generous enough in heart and mind to forgive a fellow slave, fellow servant. And people looking on, we are told in this parable, from this is too much. This fellow is, has been so blessed, you know, to have his debt forgiven. And now he doesn't want to forgive a fellow servant who is unable to pay. So they go back to the, to, to the master and, come, and, and bring that to his attention. And the master summoned him, you wicked slave. I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? So we want forgiveness for our sins. We should be prepared to forgive others. And if we cannot forgive others, we will find that our, sin, our own sins cannot be forgiven. So the master in his anger handed him over to pay the full penalty that was removed earlier. He was set free from that, all the consequences of his inability to pay. Now he has to pay the full consequences. And Jesus ends this power by, with this conclusion. Just so, in that same way, my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So just as this fellow who couldn't forgive, had to bear the full weight of his debt, his sin. So if we don't forgive, we'll have to pay the full penalty of our sin, which is eternal damnation. So when we say, as I said at the beginning, we hear people say, I will never forgive so and so. It's simply, Father, forgive them for they know not what they say. They do not know that they're condemning themselves to eternal damnation. Because if we do not forgive your, our brother or sister from the heart, then we will not be forgiven. So it tells us you know, how important forgiveness is. And, and for some of us, it's very hard. For, we might say for all of us. Some more so than others. And it's very hard when we are hurt, when people do us wrong, all kinds of you know, things that can be done to us that devastate us. But what is more devastating than being bad from the kingdom of God? There's nothing more devastating than that, so we have to understand what Jesus is saying. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from the heart. So we recognize that you know, it's, a, it's a challenge that we have and we go back to the same God, this God of forgiveness, to forgive us and to help us to be able to forgive in turn. So may God help us all as we seek to grow more and more you know, into that, that ability. That it's, a, it's, it's a gift from God. As we ask God, God will enable us to forgive when we have been hurt and we have been sinned against. The Lord be with you. We continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 42 of our Books of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We come now to our canticle and we turn to page 174 of our Books of Common Prayer for the proper six. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Saviour Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we continue in prayer. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, our Father, you have bidden light to shine out of darkness, and have awakened us again to praise your goodness and to seek your grace. Make us children of the light and of the day, that our lives being open to your glory, we may shine as lights in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So close us in your spirit, that we reaching forth our hands in love may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And we continue in prayer as we pray for people in every part of God's world who was hand to be upon them of, of his grace and love and peace. And we pray especially for those who live in countries where there is much suffering, where there is war and fighting, where there is starvation, where there are oppressive regimes and life is hard. We pray especially for an end to the war and the death and destruction that's taking place in that fight between Russia and Ukraine and between Israel and the Hamas in the Middle East. Father, touch hearts and minds of those who are intent on waging war and Fill their hearts with their, that peace and turn them around, Lord, that they may now pursue with equal zeal the peace. The peace, Lord, that will make such a difference in the lives of so many. Father, we pray for your church worldwide, for all who are ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for those ministers, Lord, that you would touch their hearts and fill their imaginations that they will so be able to minister to your people, that they will make your love and your peace known and spread in every place where they, they minister. We pray for our own country, Lord, the Trinidad and Tobago, for our leaders, our president, our prime minister, members of parliament, ministers of government, all those in positions of decision-making, all those who work to deliver the services and benefits of our country to others, we pray for all those persons that they will do all in their power and make their decisions always that are in the best interest of all. We pray for those in our country, O Lord, who look after our children in our children's homes, you know, the homes in our country, our parents. We pray for teachers and others who work with our children, those adults who work in sporting and cultural and other such settings where they have influence on young people. For all such persons, Lord, we pray your wisdom and grace. We pray, Lord, that they will have a sense of understanding of our, of our children, Lord, and we'll be able by example and teaching to help them to grow into their fullest potential. For those who are awakened to a day of need, 
homes where parents do not know how they will feed their children today. Those who are sick and suffering, Lord, and are crying out for your healing. Those who are hurting because of the loss of loved ones. And in mourning, we pray that they'll experience your consoling presence. We continue to pray for our senior citizens who need our care and attention. Make us willing, Lord, to, to reach out and, and assist them at this stage in their lives. We continue to pray for those who are unemployed, those who, who do not have the means to support their families, those who have suffered other kinds of loss, loss of, loss of jobs, loss of property, loss of loved ones, loss of in, in relationships, people who somehow feel, Lord, that you know, they are lost, they are alone, who feel, Lord, they need that support, they need encouragement. Give us hearts, Lord, and eyes that, that would see and hearts that would respond to the needs of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue with the prayer of dedication on page 47. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.